sitting position and posture. Sitting is the second worst positioning for the lower back in terms of strain and difficulty in maintaining good spinal alignment. For sitting in front of a computer, we have two choices in terms of how we utilize the chair and our position. If we use a chair and we sit back on it, then the posterior contour of the chair needs to help support the natural inward curvature that we have to the lumbar spine. That curve is called the lordosis and as long as we maintain that slight inward curvature it helps the complete spinal alignment. For if we lose that curvature, if we let it slump, so the upper body posture slumps also like this if we're in front of a computer. Here the head is balanced over the shoulders with good spinal alignment, meaning minimal activity of the muscles. But as soon as we slump, the head, neck, and shoulders go forward. This also applies to sitting on a couch or any soft living room furniture. If we slump into it, our upper body alignment as well as the lower body deteriorates and becomes very stressful. So the contours of the chair and the adjustment to it needs to fit our contour of the lumbar spine so that we don't have to try to hold that with our own muscular effort. I'm using this folding chair as a demonstration simply because it fits me very well. So this supports my lower back and we also find that the position of our feet make a difference as to our tendency to slump the lower back. The more out front our feet are, the more it wants to round the whole spine, which is detrimental. So for the most part, sitting with the feet either in front of you or perhaps tucked underneath helps to hold the position. The second possibility, especially if we're at a desk or a computer, is that if we don't want to sit all the way back in the chair, we can sit on the front half of the seat, which has the advantage of it allowing us to just kind of rock our pelvis forward, which makes it really easy to keep that desired lumbar curvature. Our feet would need to go underneath the chair so this is more like a position of straddling, but that allows for the maintenance of very good upper body alignment and avoids the slumping posture. It also is useful in that it makes it easy to get up out of the chair if you happen to need to do that. The remainder of the setup in front of a computer becomes important as to the position of the keyboard. And so we would sit up with good spinal alignment. We'd like to imagine a bungee cord pulling us upright, elongating the spine, giving us good posture. And then we want to completely relax the shoulders and bend the elbows. And that's the level that our keyboard needs to be at plus or minus 10 degrees of elbow bend. We also would like the mouse at the same level. One of the problems that is common is that if the mouse is positioned up on, say, the desktop at a higher level, then we have to hold the hand poised to operate the mouse. That activates all of these right side neck and shoulder muscles just keeping the hand ready to operate the mouse so if you're reaching for it or if it's elevated now you're engaging all these muscles constantly and that frequently leads to right side symptoms. The monitor should be at the center one third of the monitor should be at eye level when you are looking straight ahead 
and we'd like the distance between the eye and the monitor to be roughly 24 inches. Now, many ergonomics books say the top one-third of the monitor at eye level, but that causes the head to still drop just a little, and I find that we want the middle one-third at eye level so that we can look straight ahead, and this allows the head, neck, and shoulders to maintain what we term neutral position, which is the strongest posturing of the neck on top of the shoulders and keeps our head in balance. 